from the goalkeeping perspective, we have to watch an ankle from high above. He is very far out, and and he hasn't got his defense sorted. Um, they they have switched off. Two of the the Czech players are actually by themselves. Yeah. So already as a keeper there, it has to be a warning sign. You, you there, you need to take precaution because you know things can happen in an instant, and. The ball gets played out to one of the Czech players, and then he realizes. But he's he's close to the the D, uh, you know, and and you can't be that. If if he if he's got all the players marked and and they're in in good positions, you can be a little bit more aggressive. So I think that's the only criticism that he switches off as well. He is not on top of the defenders because that's your job. When the ball is down the other end, that's the only job is to make sure you're organized. And you're talking about as a we, you know, I got that pelted at me, rest defense. You gotta be, always have an extra player. You gotta always protect against that counter attack. And that was from, def- from the defenders and from the goalkeeper wasn't sorted. And that caused um, the goal. Great insight. Is there ever a reason for a goalkeeper to be that high up the pitch in that situation? You know, the, the game has changed now. You know, there's an expectation of the goalkeeper to be, you know, you're talking about this sweeper keeper, you know, Manuel Neuer was the first one and and it's very effective uh, because that, most teams that want to be in possession, they keep, they keep that high line uh, and, and can you be that player that can, you know, so, so it's something you, you're taught and some managers want you to be very aggressive. We actually, when I played at Stoke, we, uh, uh, we ended up scoring a goal against Thibaut Courtois and, and we knew before the game that he was very high up and to Tony, uh, um, Charlie Adam actually hit a, a, a you know, from inside our own half. Uh, and, but we knew that. So that, that was all like, if you get a chance there, shoot because he's way yeah, right. So there's more than improvisation and impulse in something like that yeah, sometimes. And, and actually, if you watch that clip uh, of today, he has a look before. So as soon as the ball is heading his direction, he looks at the keeper. Then he looks down and then he strikes it. So he's already aware because that's not a natural thing for, for a striker at the halfway line yeah. to look at the goalkeeper. Yeah. So he's already aware what's happening. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. And when you talk about, Jake, where is there a reason for a keeper to be so high? So you're also saying as well that it's probably a bit of responsibility on him as well to have barked out that organisational duty that, that let them down in the first place? Yeah, I would say that's the main issue is that they're not organised and that's part of the goalkeeper. You, 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 you're there, you, you've got the best view in the house. You've got to be on top of that because that's the only job you have in that phase of the game. And um, and then potentially he, he's a little bit too high up. I don't think he needs to be so close to the halfway line. But, you know, I've been in that situation and you can, as I said, if everything is in perfect order and it wasn't. Well, I got lobbed when I was on the six-yard box. So, I mean, I know exactly... <laughs> You got locked on the line. <laughs> <I mean. laughs>